Russia has said actually three or four things. They have said that uh, the decision is uh, fin for Finns and Swedes to make. Secondly, if uh, these countries join to NATO, this will have a, a political military changes, mean political military uh, changes in, in, in the Baltic Sea area. And to these changes, Russia has to respond. And of course, our understanding of this response is that uh, Russia maybe will have more military equipment on the border, and, and this will be a NATO border then. And of course, Russia will, will guard it in, a, in an other way than, than uh, previously. And then the fourth announcement has been by former President Medvedev, who said that then uh, Baltic Sea will no more be a nuclear-free uh, area. But of course, we have already seen Iskander missiles in, in Kaliningrad and, and so forth, and, and these are the missiles where also nuclear warheads can be, can be used. So the nuclear risks, of course, have been there always. Until the 24th of February, we had a slightly naive and wrong impression of what, what kind of a country Russia is. We now know that Russia is prepared and willing to use reckless, brutal military force against its non-allied uh, neighbors without provocation to further its expansionist, imperialist agenda. This is the new reality with which we have to cope, and it has forced us to reassess or reconsider some of our long-held traditional ways of thinking. This opinion poll suggests 76 percent of Finns want to join uh, the military alliance. Why? Uh, because they've seen Russia's aggression in Ukraine, its expansionist zeal, and even though Vladimir Putin has threatened retaliation, if Finland and Sweden uh, join NATO, uh, it is felt here by the people that it will make them safer and because of NATO's policy of all for one and one for all. So an attack against one will be seen as an attack against all. Don't forget, Finland has a 1,300 kilometer long uh, border that it shares uh, with Russia. So it feels particularly exposed. Yes, it has. And as Katya Adler was saying there, support for NATO beforehand was about 20 percent. Now it's up to 70 percent. That means that if you look around me here and you stop people in the street, one of every two people has now changed their mind and decided that it is much safer for this country and this border region to stay to get inside the tent of NATO and that promise of collective security than to try to deal with Russia individually, which is what Finland has tried to do for many, many years. This country had been on the threshold of uh, NATO, don't forget. It had been uh, a member of NATO's partnership program since 1994. There has been intelligence sharing. There have been joint exercises. But Finland always thought it was best to deal with it its neighbour uh, through constant dialogue and also through preparation through that dialogue. But things will now change. This border region in particular becomes the front line for NATO. NATO adds eight an 800 mile long border to its territory, doubling the length of the NATO-Russia border. And from Vladimir Putin's perspective, that does change the complexion of things here in the Baltic region. It means that he has to defend twice as long a border. It means that his own, for example, his own home city of St. Petersburg is now just a two or three hour drive from NATO territory, which would be here in Finland as well. OK, James, thank you very much. James Reynolds there for us.